Is it better to do low reps, medium reps, or high reps for muscle building? If you talk to a strength athlete, like a powerlifter, strongman, or weightlifter, you'll be told that you gotta hit low reps to build thick muscles. In contrast, if you talk to most bodybuilders, you'll hear about higher reps being best to develop a dense muscle. So, which rep range is best for muscle building then? In most training textbooks and magazines, you'll see a continuum for reps, where on one side you have strength, and then on the other side you have endurance, and smack dab in the middle, you have hypertrophy. From this, people often split up reps as one to five for strength, six to 12 for hypertrophy, and greater than 12 for endurance. Well, that sounds nice and simple. It's actually quite wrong and not in line with current research. Welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli, physical therapist and strength conditioning coach with CIS Athletics. And today we're gonna look at the research on this and we're gonna help you decide which rep range you should use in your training. So let's get into it. When we look at different rep ranges, it's common for people to think that there's this relatively distinct change in results. Low reps, such as one to five, give you strength. Medium reps, such as six to 12, give you hypertrophy. And high reps, essentially anything over 12, gives you endurance. However, this line of reasoning is outdated. Instead, our current research shows us that it looks more like this. As you can see, there's a lot more overlap than most people think. In general, it appears that we can have a relatively similar effect for hypertrophy in most rep ranges. However, there are a few different considerations that we should discuss as they're quite critical in this conversation. Number one, proximity to failure. In our global body of research on muscle growth, we've seen that how close someone is to failure is quite important to muscle growth. Generally, this means that you need to be reasonably challenged in your set for it to really stimulate muscle development. This is particularly true in cases of lighter weights because we need to create a sufficient level of tension and challenge for the muscle to grow. Using a rule of thumb for aiming to be at least within five reps of failure for hypertrophy focused work is definitely helpful, particularly on isolation exercises. This general outline is helpful when we consider the research on a spectrum of reps being relatively equal for muscle growth. We can begin to apply it practically to different exercises. You see, not all exercises feel the same with the same reps. For instance, doing a set of 12 reps on deadlifts is soul crushing. In contrast, doing a set of 12 reps on curls feels pretty comfortable. We can usually shy towards the lower end of numbers for larger compound movements, and for more smaller isolation type movements, stick more towards the higher end. If you'd like us to cover a video in the future discussing training to failure, when it's best, and when you shouldn't, let us know in the comments. One more quick note on intensity before we move on is that we do see that extremely low weight, high rep sets don't seem to provide as much benefit. There's been a recommended cutoff of at least 30% of one rep max in the research body for hypertrophy. Most people wouldn't naturally use this light of a weight, so it's not that much of a concern, but we did want to clarify that before moving on. Number two, volume. When it comes to building muscle, volume is huge. If we look at the relationship between hypertrophy and volume, we see that generally more volume will result in more muscle growth. You can do too much in either one session or in a week and see muscle growth go down, but that's a topic for another video. What we see is that in general, lower, medium, or higher rep sets are relatively equal from a stimulus standpoint for hypertrophy. It's really about how many total sets you get done. For instance, Doing six sets across the week for squats will result in more hypertrophy than three sets, as long as both are at the same effort level. This is important to factor in, as it can be really hard to do super low reps or super high reps for a lot of sets, particularly closer to failure. Doing singles, doubles, or triples at an appreciable load is not something that you're going to see someone generally do for 10 to 20 sets in a movement in a week and it often requires way more rest to repeat. Similarly, trying to do 15 plus rep sets close to failure is brutal, and having to repeat that for a ton of sets is likely gonna get sloppy, losing your technical proficiency, decreasing the goal stimulus, and possibly increase your likelihood of injury. As such, you likely need to pick a rep range which matches the movement and repeatability to maximize your volume. 
If you want us to make a dedicated video on how many sets you should do to maximize muscle growth, let us know in the comments below. Number three, variation slash undulation. We just discussed how we see the sets of five reps, 10 reps, and 15 reps all provide a similar amount of stimulus for hypertrophy, and that it should be just more about the total number of hard sets. And that's true, and it should be a focus point. But we do have some research that suggests a varying set and rep scheme across a week within a program is beneficial. There are various terms that have been used for this. The most known is DUP, or Daily Undulating Periodization. This means having a different rep sets on different days of the week for training. For example, on day one, you're doing squats for three sets of six reps. On day two, doing deadlifts for three sets of four reps. And on day three, doing the belt squat for three sets of 10 reps. So while hard sets is generally a good focus point, having some variation within the reps through the week, particularly on movements which challenge the same muscles, is gonna be beneficial. All right, let's summarize. While many people think that there's a specific number of reps to do for hypertrophy, when it comes to building muscle, there isn't a magical rep range. Being somewhere between three and 15 reps is probably ideal. However, you should pick your rep range to match up to the movement, to allow good technique and repeatability while also getting somewhat close to failure. It'll also be beneficial to vary your reps through the week to maximize your stimulus. Hopefully this helped clarify some points for you, gave you a little bit of insight into what the best rep range is for building muscle. If you'd like us to cover any other topic relevant to this, let us know down in the comments below. If you need a training program to help you get stronger, fitter, and just feel better, check out the programs that we offer down in the description box below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.